In this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna create this snow person that kind of builds themselves. We're gonna be looking at automating some processes in After Effects so that we can have the rotation of an object be linked to how far it's traveling. This will be great for whether you're building a snowman and you need the snowball to get larger as it rolls, or maybe a tire on a car, or a soccer ball, all these things that roll on the ground can't really think of any others. We're gonna look at using null objects to power our animation and make things a little bit easier. Like having the head climb up to the top of the body also uses a null object. There are some very mathy expressions in here. If this sounds like things you wanna learn, I only have one question for you. Do you wanna build a snowman? This tutorial is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, animation, coding, and much, much more. A premium membership at Skillshare gets you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. I'm an expert. I have a course on there. You can check that out. But also, we have experts like Rob Merrill. He's a full stack JavaScript developer. Check out his many courses and get started in JavaScript, which I mentioned because After Effects uses JavaScript to power expressions like the ones in this very tutorial. Skillshare is more affordable than most learning platforms with an annual membership coming in at under $10 a month. And the first 500 people to use the link in the description skl.sh slash ecabrams6, that's ecabrams and the number six, will get two months of Skillshare for free. So we're in After Effects. Let's get started by making a new composition, working in the uh, pretty normal 24 frames a second HDTV preset. This is gonna be called the exam poll. And if you get stuck, if this is difficult, head on over to evanabrams.com and get yourself this project file, this example file that we're making right here. Links will be in the description, in the cards, all the regular places. I've already gone ahead and created a composition for a snowy texture that we're making use of. That's really just a white solid with noise HLS set to grain, so we don't need to worry too much about that. What we do need to do is make a snowball or a circle of some kind. So I'm gonna double click up here on the old ellipse tool, toggle down into the ellipse, twirling even further. And I just like to take these numbers, take them down to zero, and then go 360, they're linked together. So now this is a circle with a diameter of 360 pixels. Now that's gonna be important. Diameter is, is a key thing in this tutorial. And we're gonna be doing some math, some trigonometry math, which is gonna be great. If you're afraid of trigonometry, don't worry. I'm here to talk you through it, it's gonna be fine. Our challenge here is that we want this to rotate and scale and get larger. So we can tell if it's doing all those things. I've brought this texture with us, which I'll bring in and I will parent to the layer, there we go. And I'll just put it below. And you can either use a track mat, like here you go alpha mat, which will make sure that it's always in the same size as the layer above it, so we can only see this much of it, but it's parented, so anywhere this goes, so goes the texture. Or you could use the set mat effect, that'll get you there too. Now we have a texture on here, we can see when we rotate. Let's say you want this to move side to side, pick up some snow and get larger and rotate on the ground. Well, sounds like we wanna use the position, rotation and scale. So we've just set keyframes, move ahead in the future, move this along the ground, rotate it a bit and it's gonna scale up. So, oh, well, now it's going into the ground. So I need to go back and maybe drag out a ruler, figure out where the ground is and move this up so that it's sitting on the ground, I guess. Maybe that'll do it. Let's see, oh, oh yeah, that's, that's pretty close, I guess. But if I wanna go back and change things or do some more nuanced motion, I'm setting so many more keyframes than I need to. This is too much work. I'll just delete these keyframes. Wouldn't it be great if this snowball would just grow from the ground? It would get bigger from the ground, not from its middle, not from the anchor point, which I need to remain in the middle so that it rotates along that axis. What if I could just have this grow from the ground? And wouldn't it be great if I could have it only move horizontally? Because I really just need it to roll horizontally. I don't want it to be on that diagonal line that we saw. I'm gonna go ahead and go new, null object. Null objects are great. If you don't use them, you definitely should. Uh, they are great for organizing things, controlling things. I'm just gonna drag this one around, holding command so that it snaps to features. And it's gonna snap to the bottom there. You might not have that feature on your version of After Effects, but just line it up with the bottom here. 
And this is going to be our control. So I'm going to name it control. Uh, this blue shape here, I'm going to call this the body. It's going to be the body of our snowman. And I'm going to duplicate the control and make one called reference. Reference. That'll become clear why I'm doing that later, but it's just a little bit of a setup. That the body is going to go onto the control, and the control is going to go onto the reference. And that's important because on the control, you'll notice the position is 0, 0. The position of the reference is 960. 720. Because the control position is at 0, 0, if I move it away from the reference, I know it's traveled 360 pixels, say. That's going to be just a little point of reference for us so that we can kind of understand what some of the math is doing in here. And for me, I like to do this so that I'm able to drive other things based on the distance that this has traveled. So let's set up that distance movement right now. So here at zero, zero, what we're going to do is call it the proportional grid, grab the reference, because that's the furthest back in the chain, and move it over here. So this is where this whole ring -a roll can begin, which is right there. And we'll set keyframe position for the control. And let's move ahead to maybe two seconds. And this will have traveled, I don't know, 320 by then. And at four seconds, it'll have moved all the way into the middle of the frame. Looking good. That'd be uh, 640, I think, at that point. Nice round numbers. So what's going on? This is just moving, moving over, moving over. Great. I'm going to call up the scale. What I'd like it to be is 100% large here. If I move back here, it'll be a little bit smaller. Move back here, it'll be a little bit smaller still. So I'm setting these keyframes by clicking the stopwatch. And as you can see, as it moves from left to right, it's getting larger getting larger. I can take these keyframes, hit F9 to ease them, go into their graph editor, and just grab them, pull the handles like this, so they're getting a push and getting a push. So far, it doesn't look like a snowball rolling, right? It just looks like a thing that's translating and growing, which is okay. That's part of what we want to have happen, but it's not rotating. So let's do the highly complicated expression I'm joking, it's very easy. This is a modification of an expression I saw from Carl Larson. He does some tutorials on Creative Cow. Very talented fellow, very good at explaining math. I will attempt to do as well as he does. So now we need to get that rotation going. Now we're going to do that by selecting the body, hitting R, holding Alt, and clicking on that rotation. So now we're going to get this expression editor. Mine's kind of stretched out of position. Let me just whoop, bring that up so we can enjoy it. And we're going to type in some code so that After Effects will do things that we want. It'll just automatically do them. It's so wonderful. And we're going to start by setting up some variables. If you're new to expressions, I'm going to try to go slow, walk you through what's happening, why we're doing it, and hopefully it makes sense. So we're going to call up some variables. Variables help us organize our information. So the first variable I want is going to be D. And D, for me, is going to stand for diameter. I don't want to type out diameter, because then you'll know I can't actually spell it. So D is going to be equal to 360. We know that because this ellipse is 360 by 360. So edge to edge size is 360. Hit a semicolon to end that line. C for circumference is equal to D times math.pi. Now math.pi is this set of mathematical constants. So we can just go to the math and say, hey, Here's pi. It's like when you hit the pi symbol on your calculator, it's 3.1415, blah, blah, blah. And we just call that up by typing in math.pi, capital M, capital P-I. Semicolon to end that line. We've got the circumference just using our high school math. So now we're going to need to get the rotation. The rotation is going to be equal to 360 degrees. And uh, that's it's not related to the first number, 360. I realize... This might be a confusing whoopsie. Should have used a slightly different number, but anyway, we've gone this far now. So 360 degrees divided by C for the circumference. And we're going to use this number to drive the rotation of this thing. So a few more things we need first. We need to know delta X change. How much on the X axis are we changing? How far is this thing rolling? So delta X is going to equal the first part of this position. So you can just pick whip to the first part here, or you can type out this comp dot layer dot transform dot position, and that'll get you where you're going. Just make sure you name things and label them so you can find them. And we're looking at the zero part, the first part of 
that property. And again, semicolon. Now we're going to also need the scale. And the scale is going to be equal to the first part of the scale. Same thing. And we need that scale because as this layer scales up and down, it changes the circumference. It's getting larger, it's getting smaller. You're scaling that layer up. So it's important to bring that into the calculation. Now our final line, when we put it all together, is going to be R times delta x, so the rotation times the change in distance divided by the scale. And one thing we've forgotten to do is that this scale here, we don't want the raw number. We want to divide this by 100. Now, why do we want to do that? Well, because the scale, when it's at 100 out of 100, is a 1, meaning no change. Times 1, stay the same. If it was at, say, 50%, it would be 50 out of 100, or a half. So we would be dividing by a half, and we'd be changing this thing to have scaled correctly as we scale this up and down. So I'm going to click off, and I'm going to cross my fingers and uh, hope this looks correct. Look at it go. It's rolling. It's rolling along. So just a few lines of expression, and this is already automating so much of the process. Now, why is that important to automate this kind of thing? Well, we could have just done regular rotation keyframes. But now I have the freedom to do a little thing like this. Let's say I want a little anticipation before this starts rolling again. I can copy this keyframe. I can go back in time a little bit to here. So now it'll it'll arrive at this point earlier. And then I want it to just kind of roll back a bit and then start going forward. So it's going to roll back and then start going forward. It builds a little bit of that anticipation. And I don't need to set an extra keyframe for the rolling. How wonderful is that? And on this side, I could say, well, maybe it uh, overshoots a little bit before it comes to here. So it's just gonna go a little bit beyond and then come to rest. So, and I'll probably need to touch up the keyframes here a little bit so that it's, you know, not as sucky. So now we've got those things built in by just adding a few more keyframes, kind of brings it to life just a little bit and it's automatic. It's automatic because we know the action of this thing is rolling, so if it ever changes its position left and right, it has to change its rotation. It's forcing these things together. We're kind of uh, rigging this thing so that it always behaves the way we want. Now, something else I want to change here is that the texture is scaling up, right? The texture is scaling up, it's stretching. That's not necessarily what we want for the snow, right? The snow should be adding on layers. So this texture being parented to the body isn't really working out, but we can undo some of that scaling by calling up the scale of the control and the scale of the texture using another expression to link these together, right? Because we always want this relationship to be true. So hold down Alt, click on the scale. Let's write in a new expression. Let's say X equals that scale. So we can call it in just like that. But let's subtract 100 from that so that we know the difference between the scale value and 100. So if the scale of the control is at 100, then we don't really need any change to the texture, right? We just want to make sure that if the control is getting bigger or smaller, that the scale of the texture is going in the opposite direction. So now we know the difference between the control and 100. Now we can say S is equal to, I think it's 100 minus X. So that should get us where we want to go. Let's find out. And our final line here is going to be S comma S. So we're basically saying whatever S is, put that in the horizontal and vertical scale. So now if we hit control, ooh, we're going to get an angry noise. What's the trouble, do you think? Arrays can't extend to more than one value. Oh, I did a whoopsie because I didn't put in my square brackets and put a zero in here, which means it's going to look at only the first part of the scale. All right, so now you can see that as the control is at 90, this is at 110. So the difference is on the other side. And if you look, this texture is remaining the same size, right? So it's very important because as the thing it's parented to is getting smaller or larger, it's going in the opposite direction. We're setting up another relationship with our expressions. So now we've done two kind of complicated expressions. I hope you've uh, enjoyed uh, doing both of those. I sure did. So now the snowman needs a head. So let's duplicate these. We'll select them all. Command D to duplicate. You know, move them all so they stay 
roughly connected. And you might have to go in here, hit UU to call up everything that's different and unique about them. And you might have to go in here and change their references to make sure they're all looking at the things that go with them. So you might have to change control to control two, for example, that might be something you have to touch up. So just be aware that you might have those adjustments to do with your expressions. You might not if it's automatically changing those references for you, but just just to double check, make sure things are working. So we're going to go in here, we're going to look at all the keyframes of control two, the thing that controls the head, I'm going to remove the keyframes there for the position, zero that out. Maybe we'll scale this down to start at, say, 40%, quite tiny. And we'll grab the reference layer here, and we'll move it away. It can, it can go out here. So now we're going to grab the position of the control, which is the thing that controls it so that it rotates. Roll its way in. Whee! Here I come. Blink. It's going to come in and make contact with this larger circle here. And as it does, it should be scaling up a bit. So maybe it's scaling up to like 60. I don't know. I mean, then it would make contact around there. So that seems about right. So let's ease those. Selecting them, hitting F9, having a look at their graph editor, giving them a pull like so. And I think the position here should be up a little bit like this. So it doesn't exactly slow down to nothing, but it's going to have a little bit of speed when it knocks in here. So it makes a little bit more sense that it has momentum to climb up. Now, how are we going to get it to climb up? We could just start keyframing the position of this and move it on up. We could do that. Given that we already know you can use nulls to control other things, let's use a null. Let's make a new null object and we'll stick it, you know, right in the middle of this layer. And because that's going to be the axis that we need to rotate around to get this thing up on top. I'll just set this with a different color, maybe an orange. That seems to work. And we'll just parent the reference to that null. All right. I'm going to call up the rotation, start the keyframe here, move ahead a little bit and get it up on top. Boop, just like that. So there we go. This is up on the top and I'll just ease those and let's see what that looks like. So it's coming along normal, 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 whoop, and then it rolls its way up. So it's very easy to use a null object to come in and just have a new axis of rotation because it's not doing anything until this point. You know, it's not really affecting the layer at all. But then once we start to put these keyframes on, then it starts to change. You know, if you wanted this to start swinging around all over the place, you could have a bunch of other nulls that come in and sort of pick it up as it gets to certain points. So that's a way you can move this object very cleanly around the snowman. And pretty, pretty easy stuff. Now, one thing that this is missing is probably another part of the expression that this layer should be rotating as it climbs up the side of the snowman. So let me just hit R for rotation, twirl into this already complicated thing that we've got going on. What we're going to do is just set in a couple of brackets like this so that we don't interfere with the math. And now we're just going to add in some more rotation, add this rotational value into this expression. All right. So what that's going to do is it's going to add this rotation, which is zero up to 105 or something somewhere somewhere but look how it goes it's rotating along the surface now i'll tell you right now this is not an accurate rotation i don't believe if any of the lessons from physics and gears has stuck i know this is perhaps not correct and you could do a little bit of fudging to make that happen but really i think you've endured enough of me talking about math and expressions you've eaten your vegetables so this should be going along pretty well. And really you just need the difference between the two radii. And you know what? I'm already, I'm already falling down the math hole. I'm going to stop. Hopefully this has been helpful and you've learned a lot. I hope this inspires you to push yourself in your animation and use nulls to control things. If you've enjoyed learning about After Effects and motion design, subscribe to this channel and you will learn more of it. If you had trouble with this tutorial, let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out as best I can. If you have questions about After Effects in general, you want to suggest a tutorial topic, hit me up on Twitter. I'm on there as at EC Abrams. There's also a Facebook group. Get involved with that. If you feel you'd like to get your hands on the project file, head on over to evanabrams.com and check that out. Thanks again for watching. And if you subscribe, I'll see you around the internet.
This tutorial is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, animation, coding, and much, much more. A premium membership at Skillshare gets you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. I'm an expert. I have a course on there. You can check that out. But also, we have experts like Rob Merrill. He's a full stack JavaScript developer. Check out his many courses and get started in JavaScript, which I mentioned because after a Effects uses JavaScript to power expressions like the ones in this very tutorial. Skillshare is more affordable than most learning platforms with an annual membership coming in at under $10 a month. And the first 500 people to use the link in the description, skl.sh slash ecabrams6, that's ecabrams and the number six, will get two months of Skillshare for free.